Hi, welcome to a special Australia Day edition of Rock Arena. Rather than try to encapsulate in an hour a look at the whole country's music, we've chosen to concentrate on the output of one city, Brisbane. It's summed up in Brisbane Bands, a special presentation coming up after a couple of recent videos by one of that city's most influential musicians, Ed Cooper. Last year saw the re-release of Ed's first album, Electrical Storm. At the start of 1987, he put out Rooms of the Magnificent, and two months ago he released a studio EP titled Nothing Changes in My House. It comprises four songs from sessions recorded with his band The Yard Goes On Forever. Ed Cooper is currently recording a new studio album for release in the next couple of months. From Rooms of the, of the Magnif Magnificent, this is Claudia Castle's video for Still Winding Windows. It's a great song that really should have been a hit if only radio had played it.
Everybody loves a circus, especially Ed Cooper. Not a soul around. That song comes from the recent Ed Cooper EP, Nothing Changes in My House. Ed was born and raised in Brisbane and it was there in late 1973 that he formed Kid Galahad and the Eternals. They later became the Saints. Ed started a label, Fatal Records, and wrote, recorded and co-produced I'm Stranded. And it was that song that told the world that punk was alive and well in Australia. Ed Cooper is interviewed in this program as well as Mark Callahan, members of the Go-Betweens and a host of nationally lesser known Brisbane musicians. Brisbane Bands traces the history of the city's post-punk music and places it in its cultural perspective, relating the sound to the physical, social and political environment. Australian rock and roll has been traditionally centred in Sydney and Melbourne, with some of the biggest acts actually coming from Adelaide. Perth is seen as so far away that bands based there have to leave town or the country to make it nationally. The Brisbane scene both enjoys and suffers from a similar sense of splendid isolation. However, that's all summed up in Brisbane bands. Yeah, I think Brisbane is a good place for, for, for Bathos. It's a, it's a little bit like a large stage waiting for something to happen, I think. It was a sort of um, a page waiting for something to be written on it. I wouldn't call Brisbane an innocent city because it, innocence, uh, to me, it conjures up something that's childlike and exploring and loving in some ways. And I've never found Brisbane to be like that. I've always found it to be sort of really closed and sort of, I don't know, in some ways a, a spiteful city. But um, yeah, so in a, a naive maybe, ignorant is probably the word I'm looking for. You reach an age in Brisbane about 15 or 16 and you're looking for other people to connect with, to learn, outside of school or anything, anything like that, but to, you know, like people that, that, that were there that could teach you something, there wasn't anyone there, because that, that doesn't exist here. There, there isn't anywhere to run to in Brisbane, you just sit. Typical Friday night in Brisbane would probably consist of um, me being picked up by a friend who was uh, wealthy enough to have a car and um, go to a bottle shop or something and um, lie about our ages, buy a bottle of invalid port or something and um, drink at it. Friday night in Sandgate uh, was a horrible pretty horrible sort of a place at the time. Um, the place was sort of uh, a lot of kids around, a lot of kids, a lot of kids, nothing to do. Um, territorial. There was, uh, there was always fights. Whenever there was a, uh, a dance on or something like that, and that always turned into a bloodbath. Musically, everybody was sort of uh, you know, playing in cover bands and um, sort of basing themselves pretty strongly on, on some sort of overseas bands. Like, for instance, there'd be a band which would do a repertoire of Alice Cooper songs and wear Alice Cooper makeup and that sort of thing. They were the bands that were getting work, we weren't. The reason why they didn't write the songs, I don't think, was due to the fact they were incapable or anything. It was the fact that uh, they didn't get a reaction from the audience, because unless the audience and those, the, the audiences that went to see these live groups 
knew the songs they were playing, they would just stand there like stunned mullets and just stare at them through their, their own original and uh, the minute they hit the first chord of their Rolling Stones number or something, they'd be up dancing again. I think probably the reason that most of the bands were so derivative was because um, they lacked imagination. I, I don't think that you have to come from a particular place to do something. Stranded was um, written in 1974. It's written on a train on the way home, just um, sort of an indication, I suppose, in some ways of how I felt and how people that I knew felt living in Brisbane. This is the place where we filmed our first film clip. I think we were probably one of the first bands to do a film clip, um, which wasn't just a band playing on a stage, the sort of set up, you know, carefully decorated for the occasion. Yeah, the sort of parties that we had um, were really excuses for the band to play. And they eventually got closed down because we advertised the location, which was then called Club 76. And as soon as we painted that on the, the front window, the health department came in and said, you don't have enough toilets to be a club. Um, so the place did resemble one somehow. I finally panicked when there's nothing to do was uh, simply written on a, on a train. Warren and I and uh, Glenn, I think, the bassist, sitting on a train. Nothing to do, a piece of paper and a pen, so we wrote a song. strange state. Cigarettes and alcohol came out of Warren's desire to uh, wipe himself out. He used to drink a hell of a lot.
London in 1977 was a, a fairly vibrant city to be in. It didn't last all that long, but it was um, a phenomenal eye-opener to us at the time. And uh, just being able to live like uh, you sort of assume bands would live, you know, have nice flats in Hampstead and have uh, record company cars pick you up to take you to the studio to record a new single, that sort of thing. <laughs> that was all extremely exciting. That never happened to us. Always. Countdown with we Chris, Chris Bailey of the Saints. And here is our, our new single, single called Know Your, Your Product. desperately wanted to go to Saints concerts. In fact, that was why we, as a band, started, because we heard Stranded and we just thought, this is it, you know, it's got to be the maximum sound, the whole thing. And, to the, and we loved the, the Saints, but never saw them play. Although we did try and steal on the cover of the Stranded album, where it has Stranded written. Mm. Well, we found you know, the house up in, is it uh, Petrie Terrace? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, had that written on the wall. And we, we spent hours trying to work out how we could take the plaster off the wall and keep the stranded sign intact. No, I, I heard the, the record on the radio and the first time I heard it, I just I was just astounded. I was just sort of knocked right out of bed. I thought it was great. And then the, the announcer said at the end of it, that's the Saints, I'm stranded. And it's just come out and I was just, it was a band I'd seen three or four months before live. And I just couldn't believe it. I thought it was just sensational. When I think back to bands, I guess, like the Saints and the Leftovers, and compare our own experience, um, 
certainly, um, as you suggested before, there may have been a slight hint of intimidation because indeed they were were true rebel rousers and and uh, you know we were we were tossed from the university really. Uh, um, you know, our heart was in the right place. So we didn't exactly have the credibility of living in a derelict squat like the guys from the Saints did up on Petrie Terrace. Guys in bands at uni were taking drugs and drinking and raising hell. Well, I don't know exactly if, if it was on, uh, on the, on the five-star level of, of guys from the Saints and leftovers. Sometimes you know I can Feel like it's never again I'll write this last chance for tomorrow Yeah, you know that I can't cry Tomorrow's tears, tomorrow's tears You know that I can't cry Tomorrow's tears, tomorrow's tears You know that I can't cry Tomorrow's tears, tomorrow's tears Yeah, oh, the way you keep your hair It gives an indication our friends looks like investigation sometimes i know it's when you see your pictures are matching men the color change and then it's tomorrow yeah you know that i can't cry tomorrow's tears tomorrow's tears you know that i can't cry tomorrow's tears tomorrow's some of those camels don't even run some poor witch with a revolving gun shoots down runs down in her fur gown Cowboys don't argue, baby, they just lasso. Who needs a pyramid to keep your jewels? The starting points for us was uh, this music store in, in Tuong, run by a, um, an entrepreneur, a young entrepreneur called Damien Nelson. And I got a job there working part time when I was going to university. And through that, Robert got a job, and I think Lindy ended up working there as well. And we started uh, a record label, Able Label, and put out. Uh, quite a few Brisbane bands on it ourselves. She comes from Ireland, she's very beautiful. I come from Brisbane and I'm quite plain. She's from the mountains, so close to heaven. Clouds on her shoes, stars on her chest. pretentiousness at that time I imagine it would have been because a lot of people would have looked on themselves as like poets almost uh, I guess the way people must have thought back in the 30s in in Paris places like that, that they were doing something new. I can't see that uh, Lou Jean Cocteau is, has any relevance to Brisbane whatsoever. And a lot of, like you said, the university bands, there was uh, no relevance whatsoever to what was happening in the place. It was like a dream, you know, a dream to get to Paris or a dream to get to London or, or whatever, whatever those bands did. Hardest. Fades away and the day turns to grey and she's so 
that time, everybody was um, playing music. Um, practice rooms were available everywhere. They, they were incredibly cheap. And so people were um, taking over buildings in the valley and just, we could practice 24 hours a day. All my friends had told me were someone else calling I couldn't believe them Oh, what could this love me? Brisbane Sound, that striped Brisbane, Brisbane Sound, striped sunlight sound. I think that was a quote on the back of uh, Oliver Lee Remick from the Gopis, which I thought was beautiful, that striped sunlight sound, which to me describes the um, Brisbane music. It's thinness and it's kind of um, the fact that it's sort of e ephemeral. struck us about the, the Brisbane sound, if you like, when we came up here was the, it was really thin and it was, and it was really underproduced and there was something very exciting about that and uh, in particular, you know, it was the way they, that people would play their instruments, you know, they would, the guitarists would just plug straight into the air, there was, there was no um, gadgetry or anything like that, the guitar was usually out of tune. Um, 
the drummer, instead of providing that really thump sound that comes from, you know, American um, disco or whatever, would really, the tradition of the Who, where they would play melodies around on the tom-toms and the, the bass would thrash and it would produce this really thin, rhythmic sound. I know this girl This very special girl And she works in a library, yeah Standing there behind the counter Willing to help with all the problems that I encounter Helps me find Hemingway Helps me find Genet Helps me find Brett Helps me find Chandler Helps me find James Joyce She always makes the right choice She's no queen She's no angel, just a peasant from the village She's my God, she's my God, she's my G-O-D She's my God, yeah, yeah, she's my G-O-O-D, yeah She's my God now, oh, she's my God now, yeah Karen, yeah, yeah, Karen, yeah, yeah, Karen yeah, yeah, Karen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, Karen. And the police were just going crazy at that time. They, they just didn't want groups of people anywhere, groups of young people who were rebellious. And um, it, all that was tied in at the same time. The music explosion happened at exactly the same time that they said that we couldn't demonstrate. It was a highly charged political situation in Queensland in the late 70s. And there was a couple of times where you'd be on stage doing a number and you'd just be able to look right through the, the front door of the hall in West End or South Brisbane or wherever. And you could see the police coming through the door as you're on stage and that, that happened a number of times. Like at a Heber Hall. I was very surprised that Brisbane's weekend press didn't report that 21 people were arrested at a dance in West End on Friday night. They were arrested on 28 charges ranging from obscene language to assaulting police officers. It's not the first time young people have been arrested at dances, particularly ones like this that had punk and new wave bands playing. The Caxton Street Hall in Brisbane must have one of the most notorious histories of any of the uh, rock venues around Australia. And I remember we played there one night um, we were doing a benefit for a friend who got into trouble in Brisbane and needed some money to try and mount a legal defence. And um, there was ourselves, the Sharks, and there was a variation on Zero with Michael O'Connell playing on guitar, I may remember. And we were, we were last on, and as we were packing up, I can remember that there was the sound of general hysteria from the front of the, the hall, the, the exit. And, um, we went rushing down there and I've never seen anything like it. I can still remember the sight. The, the, there was a bunch of very large uh, guys dressed in casual Brisbane gear were just kicking the hell out of the people that were leaving the hall. I mean, they were, they were punching up teenage girls, teenage boys in the heads, everything. And uh, we just couldn't believe what we were seeing. And there was total panic. And at one stage, I can remember Cecily Childs and I even were considering going and getting the police for protection to save us from these lunatics. Anyway, of course, it turned out it was Brisbane's task force. And that was really, the, as far as I'm aware, was the first time that they were, had really made themselves visible in Brisbane. And of course, their history is, is well known. They've been very violent since then. The Razor did a song for task force about them. Righto, you kids. I heard you swearing. I'm putting you up.
that we knew from a very early point that there was no future to pursue music in Brisbane because there was nowhere to play, or very few places to play, there were few opportunities, and you could run your own dances, but there were inherent problems there with police. Uh, so there was a realisation straight away, the suffocating thing, and, this is, and we knew it from friends uh, that uh, were further advanced and were, say, pursuing studies in architecture or art friends who were painting or people that were involved in other media studies. There was just a general acceptance, you've got to leave town. It's, it's like a growing up place. Toowoomba and Dolby as well, as I recall. Yeah. Well, I know a guy who went back content. there. Sorry. Yeah, he went back oh, just a couple of years ago, and he knew about this Riptides gig in Miles, and he was sort of hunting the whole town looking for somebody who'd been to it. <laughs> and the only, the only evidence he found was somebody who got his nose punched in. support any Brisbane music at all? And he said, yeah, well, we're the radio station that broke Moss, Cross and Stone. I think 
the main reason for my leaving was the incredible lack of imagination, was the small-mindedness of people. Um, I don't care if people think that I'm pretentious for saying that because um, it frankly doesn't worry me. Um, a lot of the things I was trying to get away from were people, you know, when Robert said before that you put four words together in a phrase that sounded a bit different, you know, they insulted you. You know, for a long time Robert and I were accused of being homosexual. I mean, that's how bizarre that early scene was, you know. Um, we could have moved to Sydney, but for some reason we never thought of that, you know. It was just like, okay, let's just get out of here. Brisbane is a good developing place, that's the main thing I'd say, help us along, we, you have to scrutinise yourself a lot more, because you're not getting, the, you're not getting the, um, the work, so you have to think, well what's wrong with the band? Fascist Tixville, oh how boring, no freedom to offer, just gags and cuffs, small town Hicksville, apathy's friend, endless struggle. Oh, to stop it all. I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm dead, go south, go south. I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm dead, go south, go south. In the end, the back will rearrange your face. The state's police will put you in your place. We make it great in the backward state. So why don't you make it a forex mate? Fascist tits, oh, how boring. No free and do offer. This situation is so bad in Brisbane um, where you've got no venues to play and I think it came to a time where a lot of bands, a lot of local bands were releasing, releasing their first singles or whatever and they all just realised that um, it wasn't worth hanging around for because the scene just doesn't get, it gets better but it never gets to the point where you can survive up here um, totally. It's just, I don't think, I don't, I can't see it ever will, at least not in our lifetime anyway.
opinion people have from Sydney about the Brisbane scene, it's it's always been caught, you know sort of said as the, the naive sound. It's the um, you know they're, they're all learning still, they're all growing up, and when they're serious, they'll come to Sydney or Melbourne or something. And... Brisbane being a small town suffers, I think, from a, the parochial nature that dictates that those people who come from the small town really aren't that good. How could they be if they came from the small town? And uh, I think audiences come to see us in Brisbane, and not the young kids, but, you know, the older, older kids. They come and say, prove it to us. Prove it. You know, prove you're good. We're to Europe. Of course, Paris. Yeah, you should go to Berlin. Yeah, no, Berlin. We also went to another bar, which was at 279, that main drag through the Jewel yeah. Valley. Yeah. We should go to the Hacienda or something. That was just shit. Lindy? It's your time. I find Brisbane audience is strange because I don't know who comes to see us, basically, because most of the people that used to see us are either dead, <laughs> insane, or have moved to Sydney. And That, that Brisbane radio won't you know, play our records. I, I think you know, I actually quite like that. You know, I, I just I get a perverse pleasure out of just still how stupid the people are in the city.
future Flying by the light bulb Blood to the bank Lost all your letters When their ship sank In the disjointed breaking line The soft blue approach of the water Makes a sound you won't forget When you take the wrong road round Started out Oliver Ended up Fagan Don't you know That's my problem Guess my age And my number I'm the lonely one Well it's just at the end of the day We didn't feel it was bad to come from Brisbane and make this music because, uh, well, we felt we had the, the best precedent there was, the Saints and, and even the leftovers too. Brisbane has a population of one million, so you get maybe three or four bands in five years that are really good that come out of here. I think that's a pretty good average, really. It's tin roofs, it's, it's animals still in trees, actually in the city, which is quite remarkable for um, you know, a, a big, sprawling metropolis like Brisbane is, you know, a fake metropolis. Now, while lying in bed on a, an oppressive, hot Sunday afternoon, pouring with rain, I think the those familiar words used to come to my head that get me out of here